Hey, it's Jared Hudson with the Shoot Institute, bringing you this episode of Simplify the Chaos. Hey guys, Jared here with the Shooting Institute doing a podcast from the road. We're actually in a hotel lobby right now, so there's a lot of background noise, but we're going to go ahead and shoot this here. And today, we're not going to talk about anything that's going on in the world because that's all we've been talking about, everybody's been talking about for the last couple of weeks. With Afghanistan, with COVID, with vaccines, all that, we're actually just going to talk about shooting because it's going to make us all feel a lot better. Might talk about a unicorn or a rainbow sometime during it, just anything to get our minds off of what we've been seeing on the news. However, however, we're gonna go ahead and give you a quick rundown. And by we're, I mean me and the rat in my pocket. So number one, vaccines and COVID. What in the world's going on? We live in the United States of America. Why in the world should you be forced to get a vaccine? Or why in the world should you be told you shouldn't get a vaccine? If you want one, go get one. If you don't want one, you ought not have to get one. You ought not have to have your job scrutinized or put on hold or be fired for not getting one. Military guys didn't sign up saying, oh yeah, now I can be forced to receive a vaccine. A lot of people are like, oh, in the military, that's what they do. They force you to get vaccines. No, there's a lot of guys who are trying to get out saying, hey, I don't want it or I want a religious exemption or whatever it is. And guess what? They're not giving it to them. Dudes are having to hire attorneys. This is ridiculous. We live in the United States of America. You want a vaccine? Get one. You don't want one? What happened to my body, my choice? Which rolls into the second thing. Department of Justice suing the state of Texas over their six-week abortion ban. So my body, my choice is good enough for a bunch of chicks who want to murder babies, but it's not good enough for a person who wants a vaccine. What is wrong with the world we live in? The Department of Justice is suing the state of Texas over a six-week abortion ban. But guess what? You have to get a vaccine. It's my body, my choice until it comes to your vaccine. Brings me to the third thing. We've got an administration, an administration of Joe Biden, who pulls out of Afghanistan in a terrible way, right? They give the Taliban an unbelievable arsenal, an arsenal that no terrorist organization has ever received, billions of dollars, but you, brother, you old Bubba in Alabama, or you old buddy in Texas, you know what, you can't have an AR-15. You don't need an AR-15 because guns are dangerous. Yet we just gave like a couple hundred thousand guns to the Taliban, gave them 20,000 sets of night vision or some weird number like that. We gave these dudes a military arsenal, and they're a terrorist organization, but hey, guess what? You don't need a gun. You want to know why? Because you're quite possibly a terrorist, according to the Department of Homeland Security, because number one, you don't want a vaccine. Number two, you believe in election fraud because you believe Trump won, right? You're a domestic terrorist, even though the President of the United States just made a move that gave the Taliban an arsenal like they've never had before. They're no longer a terrorist organization, folks. They're a military fighting force, just like Oprah handing out stuff. Hey, you get a Black Hawk, you get a Black Hawk, you get a Black Hawk. Helicopter with Hellfire missiles. This is crazy, the world we live in. You're the bad guy, yet the bad guys are at the top, giving all the other bad guys everything they need, billions of dollars in weapons. Which brings me to my next thing. Eddie Gallagher, however you feel about him, was drugged through the mud for stabbing a flipping ISIS fighter, yet these idiots in charge, guys like General Miley and a bunch of dudes who couldn't win a fist fight, much less a war, are sitting at the top and they get a bunch of intelligence from the Taliban and they smoke a carload of women and kids. Some woman humanitarian aid worker and seven kids were smoked in a car lo- or smoked uh, on a car ride by a predator drone based on intelligence gathered from the Taliban. Are you flipping kidding me? You murder a woman and kids, and you're gonna tell us we're bad guys because of a violent insurrection on January the 6th? That wasn't violent except for the one guy that was a DC cop or one of the protection agents for, the, uh, for a Congress member who smoked an unarmed white chick. Guys, the world is a crazy place. There's one thing that's gonna keep this world from being a crazy place, and that's salvation of the person of Jesus Christ. So if you don't know the Lord, I ask you to Ask him to reveal himself to you. If you seek Jesus, he will find you. He will reveal himself to you. He'll prove himself true. You believe that he died on the cross, rose again on the third day, and you will be saved of your sins. A lot of people say, hey, I'm not into all the crazy Jesus stuff. Well, I can tell you this. If you're not into the crazy Jesus stuff, you're into the other crazy stuff I talked about, and the other crazy stuff I talked about is really bad. All right? So uh, if you need prayer, if you are a Christian, you need prayer, say, hey, we're going through a lot of tough times, send us a message. Um, Y'all have our email. You can click on the website, send the message to the email, and we'll be more than happy to pray for you, send out your prayer requests. Finally, I am running for sheriff of Jefferson County, Alabama. 
Um, I'm an honest guy, I'm a straightforward guy, I'm a constitutionalist, and I'm there to protect the citizens. I believe that's the job of sheriff, and that's what I want to do. I'm not here to police, I'm here to protect. And that is the problem with our government right now, is they believe that they've been put in a position to police and regulate, when in reality they're for one thing and one thing only, and that's to protect you, protect your constitutional rights, protect your rights to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, regardless of your sex, of your color, of your religion, of your age, you're being called to protect. So we ask you to get on uh, jaredhudsonforsheriff.com. Go ahead and support our sheriff run in Jefferson County, Alabama, because even though it's in Jefferson County, that is the largest county in the state, it's bigger than most congressional races, <clears throat> we need your support. This thing needs to go national. It's already gone international because we've had some uh, some buddy support from other countries. Anyway, God bless y'all. We're going to get into the real podcast. That's a quick rundown and recap on what's going on. All right, so... shooting guns. We're not going to talk about the vaccine or about transgenderism or anything like that that's racy or going to cause possible offense to some of the guys at this table. We're going to talk about firearms shooting. Start it off, Chad. I really enjoy it. <laughs> that's it? That's yeah. what we got? Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So we're running this class. So we're running a class out here. We're running a class in Texas for the Air Force. And one of the primary things that we see across the board is a lack of a lack of basic fundamental, like a lack of the ability to utilize the fundamentals, right? Why do you think that is? Why do you think guys lean more into the specific application of what they use, whether it be tactical, whether it be match shooting, whether it be hunting, whatever it is, it seems like guys want to do something that's specific application as opposed to doing the fundamentals. And then when you show them the fundamentals, it's like you just blew their mind with something that like, oh my gosh, it's like a spaceship landed and aliens came out like at Troy's house and said, oh, we got this great new thing and they gave you all this stuff and then they leave, oh, right? I mean, actually. And it's like, this is just the fundamentals of marksmanship. Well, why? Why do you think Why do you think that blows their mind? Habits. Training habits. Training scars. All right, so, so, so elaborate on that. Because it blows my mind that this blows their mind. It's like the simplest thing in the world. Well, what we teach. So, like, you know, in Buzzin' SQT, uh, to go back to the combat reload, it took me a month of practicing the new way to get away from the slingshot. Okay. You know? All right. So, when you give them, you know, a crash course, like, of a week, even a, even a week long, that wouldn't have been enough for me to, to fix that training scar, you know? So, so what, so what you're saying is you think it's, it's, uh, it's nuance, boom, you hit them with a fire hose on the front end, and it's because they don't have enough time, like you're not working enough time with them for them to get used to that specific to break, thing. To break a habit. To yeah. break the actual habit. So mm -hmm. that's why every time we return, even if somebody's been to the class, it's like it's like you're blowing their mind each and every time. All right. All right. I can, I can buy that. What are your thoughts, Troy? I mean, you've taught pistol for, you're probably one of the, you and Reebles, y'all are probably one of the best individual pistol instructors. So you've taught it forever. Why do you think that? Why do you think it blows their mind? When you only teach specific application. I agree with what Eric says. Yeah, I mean, it's just once they get something put in their memory, you can't. It, it takes a long time, a lot of reps to get it out of there. Yeah. So, I mean, so how do you, so how do you I, do it? Also, it's just comfort. Com they're getting a comfort zone, and you get a guy, he's in a comfort zone. This feels good to him. This is how he's always been taught. This is the easy way. You can stand there and you can literally walk the guy through the steps to where you're like okay present and then you grab him stop there break your shot simulate your firearm in the proper direction drop your mag frame your pistol I mean you gotta literally like grab him and walk him through it after you showed him like five times you still gotta work with yeah him. even though you show it you gotta walk him through each thing so so, so, so do you think the by the numbers and you're, you and Rebels kind of came up with the by the numbers when we started doing it and that was kind of y'all's thing you were doing it a little bit with the presentation now we do presentation by the numbers one, two, three Rebels was doing it a good bit with Combat Reload do you think the by the numbers actually helps with that piece or do you think it, it messes that up by by oh, not making huge. those steps fluid no that's huge get them by the numbers and they just kind of run it fluid yeah, so you do by the numbers and then then let them create in, increase fluidity on their own. Yeah. yeah. Ask the question again, please. You don't forgot the question. Yeah. 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 Just asking why why do we think why does it blow students' minds when we literally come in and teach the basic fundamentals of marksmanship? Like it's not we're not teaching anything crazy or new. 
we're just taking them out of specific application of CQB or specific application of uh, mat shooting or specific application of hunting or whatever style of shooting they're doing, and we're just teaching them the fundamentals of marksmanship. Why does that blow their mind when they because see they've that? they've never been taught proper fundamentals. Yeah, that's that. Uh, I, I mean, when I was taught in the police academy in 98, Heck, my magazine change was wrong. I mean, just everything was wrong. You know, ultimately training with you uh, early on, I mean, it changed all that as far as, uh, I mean, all of it. So, um, so you I think it really was, just goes back to that initial, the initial training is just completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there's just no fundamentals taught there. <clears throat> or it's just, a, it's just, it's just a better way. Right. It's just a better way. It's more fluid. You know, it's just, it makes more sense. I mean, it's clearly apparent about the training scars because, like, going by the numbers is good, right? It builds muscle memory of repetition. So they can do it all day by the numbers, and then they can do it all day, you know, by themselves afterwards the right way. But as soon as you put them on a timer, they go right back. You're 95, you're 95, you're 95% of it, 95 percent of the time, you put them on a clock they'll go right back to what they were doing before because they're trying to speed up and they're going, they're, they're reverting back to their training school. Which is really just a way we kind of simulate a gunfight a little bit, you know? I mean, everybody thinks, you know, we got to run, we got to freaking do handstand push-ups, we got to swing a kettlebell. Gotta, no, just, just take a timer go, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, wow, ah, Ricky Bobby don't know what to do with my hands right now, you know, it shuts down. So that is just a way to simulate some stress so, they, so, yeah, that's why you see possibly that same thing happen is you start looking at law enforcement shootings or even military shootouts where why did nobody ever get hit in this whole thing? Well, because everything falls out, falls off the wagon and they're just, there's no fundamentals being performed. So when you say they, um, they would rather see specific application rather than fundamentals, is that kind of... Well, ge generally you speaking... specific this, application, what do you... So I guess what I mean by that is... At least from my take, of what I see is you've got guys that they, they all their shooting is based on CQB, close quarters battle, right? Guys in the, in the SEAL teams, guys in law enforcement, everything is based on how shooting applies to my applies to my job. So I'm never really using the fundamentals of shooting. I'm only using shooting as it applies to my job. Well, then I have a new job, and I want to transition my shooting over to my new job, and I can't do it. And, and I'll give you an example of how I saw this. So when I got out of the SEAL teams, I went from tactical shooting world, and I was a big hunter. You all know that. I hunted and all that. I went to tactical shooting world uh, to law enforcement, which is still tactical shooting, but I started doing the, the wildlife contracts where we're doing all the calls on these islands and stuff. And one thing I noticed is that the guys that shot for that company, uh, they really couldn't shoot that good there's some of them that could shoot good but what they could do is they could read the animals really well so where they made up for their lack of ability to shoot was their ability to read the animals and do that specific skill set and the shooting was just a tool for me i couldn't read the animals that well because i hadn't worked in this level of wildlife biology i couldn't read the animals that well but i made up for my lack of a skill set in reading the animals and my ability to shoot and i could shoot really well so <clears throat> Where I saw the issue was when, when they come in and they try to teach other people who are doing other animal calls. Because if we're doing a, a, an animal call on deer, well, that looks different than like the guys that are getting the contracts to. You, you, you've worked with these guys, the Nicole guys, the guys getting contracts to shoot pigeons that get stuck in a, in a, in a Win Dixie or something, right? Those are two different applications, yet they take the same fundamentals of shooting. The guys that shot deer all the time. They couldn't transition over and teach the guys how to shoot pigeons in a wind dixie is what I'm getting at. So it, everything they did was application-based. Now, that's not okay. bad if that's all they stick with. But the problem we run into is we've got guys like we're out here with the military right now, security forces guys. They have law enforcement. You've got a law enforcement application. You've got military application, which is just a little bit different. The job itself is a little bit different, especially on deployment. Um, You've got civilian shooter application with some of the guys that are out here working with us that work with these law enforcement and uh, Air Force Security Forces guys, right? You, so you've got civilian applications. So as you look at across the board, each group of guys or each subset have a different application. How do we, how do we teach them the best we can? And I believe it's the fundamentals. That's why we always teach that because they can take those fundamentals and apply them to each job specifically. Sure. Um, 
what what I don't understand is after you know with what how long have we done this, Troy? Well, here we go. Six seven years at least. Six seven years for for DOD, DOD right? For, for DOD, right? So we've been doing this for 10, 11 years, ten years now total, right? About ten years, DOD six or seven years, <clears throat> and it 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 blows me away that every time. Every time you go back to fundamentals, like it rocks these dudes, it rocks these dudes' world, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. Why is it so mind blowing to them when it's something that's so simple? It's exactly what you're going to say. And there's always somebody that gives them some gazoo way of doing things differently. Yeah, because it, it's not sexy. It's yeah. not sexy. It's not. I mean, we, we all say we shoot on the line. We're just like regular dudes standing here with a gun shooting, right? It's not sexy. We see that it works, but. It, it absolutely, they're like, this is good. And the reason I say this is because, the and y'all don't know this, the training sergeant called me today and he said, dude, he said, we've been, I've been getting calls all week. He said, I got five calls today with guys who are seniors, senior guys. Some of the senior guys are there that are saying, this is the best training we have ever received. The best training we've ever received. We ain't doing nothing that, like, that crazy or that special. But when they call and say that, why does it blow their minds so much? That that it's just confusing to me. I mean, it's good. It's a blessing. I'm not. I'm not complaining about it. I just would like to figure out why it blows their, their minds so much. It's, it's something so simple. Something that everybody should be teaching or learning as they sure. as they learn shooting. Well, what you've done, not. Jared, is you broke it down into steps. Yeah. For example, sights and trigger. Then moving on to grip stance. Yeah. Breathing, follow through. Yeah. And you, you start it into increments and you build on that and at the end of it it, it all comes together yeah so now maybe that's it maybe they can just maybe the picture that you're painting that because you're doing the steps they can see a little bit better it's like that guy with the puffy hair old Bob Ross I remember that the guy used to paint the pictures you know, put this little tree here this happy little tree and oh there's no such thing as a little mistake that's a happy little mistake and you put another tree up right and you're looking at what he's doing at the front end and you're like I kind of see it I don't, and the next thing you know like in 30 minutes you know you watch this show and you got this unbelievable landscape. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody does. Troy and I do. We're the oldest ones here. Yeah, y'all are the oldest ones here. I mean, I watch that, watch that stuff with my wife sometimes and it's just like it blows you away to see him paint the picture. So maybe that's it. Maybe we're almost, we got this canvas that is the students and then we paint this picture for them and at the front end they're like, I don't know, you know, I mean, I... I'm gonna have to change a little bit of that, and then by the end of it, it all comes together, and they're like, "Holy crap, I see it!" Maybe that's why it's so mind blowing to them. But it's just, to me, it surprises me at how simple and straightforward the curriculum is, and it should be what everybody's doing. How simple and straightforward it is, and just say, "Hey, we're moving you from your specific application. We're just teaching the fundamentals of marksmanship." And at the end of the day, you get phone calls, bro. <clears throat> best training ever. This is unbelievable. This is I can't even believe how how much better we are or just in one day of shooting that 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 actually that actually surprises me not that we're not good at what we do it's just it's it's, it's just very it's very simple so i don't understand it. Well, i mean i just know i i never had it broken down for me like that yeah so yeah, yeah. when you when you get that on the front end i mean it means a lot <clears throat> helps out a lot yeah and then on the what, what are y'all seeing on the on the sniper side i know for for us on the first day when we Doing that. Now this is talking. We're just talking about pistol carving on this one. Now the fundamentals of marksmanship are still the same, but then as you cut off into that specific application, we definitely see a better quality shooter as they're starting to roll doors or do whatever CQB based, and they're engaging targets that at the start they wouldn't even be able to hit at 15 meters inside a room or whatever they're shooting. Now they're, 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 they'll hit it two or three times while moving. So we we definitely see a progression there. On the sniper side now, I say the sniper side loosely because really it's just a long-range marksmanship course or really a mid-range marksmanship course um, that we provide for most of these guys. Obviously, we know they're absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge that we're trying to input on gathering data, getting your zero, gathering your data, inputting your data, truing your data, and now you've got a system that's set up to shoot. Um, however, it's it seems as if that is blowing their minds as well. Like, holy cow, I didn't know how much went into this. I mean, what what are y'all's thoughts on that? Sights, uh, trigger control. Like, I think just in general, um, these these dudes trying to figure out all the different things that encompass their side picture and side alignment, you know, like getting their parallax set, 
they have the focus on the target as their reticle and focus, their trigger control, like <clears throat> we even saw that just a 500 meter E type, like guys literally yanking that trigger completely off target. I mean, it's a pretty big target. It's like those are the two biggest things when you're looking at, <coughs> at shooting long range or, I mean, in this case, even like mid range. <clears throat> just getting those guys to figure out like oh I gotta put these two things together and I can't just let it fall off after the second third round because this is a bolt gun yeah and getting the comfortability like you could see some of the guys white knuckle on that bolt action it's like man dude you should relax dude it's not that far just pull that trigger everything's yeah. gonna be okay it's just like pistol yeah you know pull that trigger back nice and smooth let it break yeah there's a lot that goes into long-range shooting um, in terms of like everything scope the fundamentals are even finer when it comes to trigger uh, we had two guys get scope bit today you know and then I, I used to just I used the term scope shadow I asked them if they'd ever heard that and they were like I have no idea what that is and I was like all right so I had to go into that and that was like 30 minutes after we'd already been shooting hitting at 500 but I mean that's just because like we kind of helped them like hey this is your dope hold this <coughs> and shoot it and it's not that's a big target for 500 right yeah so big old silhouette you know we should have circles out there not so, that not the big big E type but yeah. again back to side picture side alignment if you got yeah. scope shadow you don't have good side alignment yeah I right. mean you can you can remedy most of that stuff just with like the basics mm -hmm. but I mean that also like it's <laughs> in sniping I get <laughs> about the milk jugs. No, I'm not thinking about the studios that got scoped it. Uh, <laughs> Just rode that one on home. Huh? And, it was, and it was after I went over, again, body position. Excellent, <laughs> excellent follow through though. Yeah, yeah. They, one yeah. dude got scoped it and he had a date that night. Oh yeah, yeah, you know yesterday, yes. Yeah. So like, I guess that's three guys that got scoped three. Three guy yesterday and two today, huh? He's like, man, I guess I'm going to say I got a knife fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's, that's what right. I'd say. <laughs> I got I scoped bit one time. I had a, uh, <laughs> speaking of getting scoped bit, I had a, one in three, like a 308 gasser. It was a 308 gasser. It was a Lewis machine and tool, and it had the, a collapsible buttstock on it, you know? I got a video of it. And I was, I'll, get it to, I'll get it to you, Ben. Maybe you can put it up sometime. And, I, and my wife loves the video. She thinks it's hilarious. That's why I got these scar man. But I'm sitting here, I'll get it loaded up. I'm thinking, Sean, it's about nine, it's like 900 meters or something like that out on a range in Alabama. And I had it all loaded up, but I had that sandbag and it pressed that button on that buttstock. And I go, and I already shot it two or three times or whatever, you know, kind of get my, my wind call right on this little silhouette I was shooting. And I hit it once and pinged it. And I said, all right, I'm going to set up my phone and film it from this end and ping it again. I get it set up and I go, Tush! and that buttstock collapsed, just <laughs> drilled me in the face. <laughs> Cut my head right here under my eye a little bit on this side. My eye turned black in this area, whatever, and I had this perfect ring right here. <laughs> and so I go to church, and this is on Saturday. I go to church the next day, and you got buddies are asking, holy crap, bro, what happened to your eye? I'm like, dude, you would not believe it. So I'm sitting at the gas pump down the road from my house filling up the truck, and some guy comes over and says, give me your truck. And I said... Nah, bro, I'm not giving you my truck. And about the time I saw him look, I turn around and his buddy, boom, smashes me with a beer bottle right here in this eye. So I hit him as hard as I could, knocked him out. The other dude took off running. And all the dudes in the Sunday school class, they're like, what? Even my brother, he's like, are you serious? Yeah. I mean, they're they were so pumped. Because in their mind, they know, like, this can't be real. <laughs> you know, this can't be a real story. But they want it to they be want real. It to be real. <laughs> yeah. Every single one of them's wife's. Every single one, they're like, hey, did, you hear, did you hear about the fight? Huh, got into that? That's from a scope or something from one of his guns. <laughs> every single one of them. <laughs> but every dude was like, they wanted it to be real. When I told them, when I saw, hey, hey guys, I just messed with you. That's from a scope on my gun. Devastated. They're like their faces, straight line, and completely devastated because they wanted that to be real. Because they felt they're like, I want that to be real because it's me. I feel like it's me too, you know? They <laughs> wanted you to freaking knock out a dude to hit you in the face with a beer bottle, you yeah. know? Can we just leave that story in? So I just thought it was pretty funny. So, man, you know, getting a scope bit, though, is not that bad. And you can always make a good story about it. So, but I wrote that one in. It's a terrible podcast. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a way this, we need Hartley here. And it's hard to talk about things, though, too, because, like, if you talk about too much, you're going to get in trouble with a wife or whoever's listening to it. Like, no, you can't say stuff like you're that. You're not going to make everybody happy, Jared. 
Well, I know you're not gonna make everybody happy. I want to make my wife happy though. <laughs> you know, I live with her. So. Make sure you keep that part in. No. Love you, babe. <laughs> Love you, babe. Love you. Come on, Christian. What do you got for us? Oh, I got nothing. Yeah, Christian's, Christian's got some good stuff. Yeah, he's got some good stuff. Why don't you tell us about your mountain hike? Why don't you tell us about your mountain hike? You don't tell us where you were or anything, what you're doing. Just tell us about your mountain hike. Uh, do I have to? <laughs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> uh, where do I start? Uh, I mean, I was dying. I was dying of COVID on the mountain. I thought God left me there to die. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. <laughs> Every day he woke up, he thought it was his last. <laughs> I'm counting days by the Z-Pack that I'm taking. Yeah, you know, you know if you were to die, we made a statue in your honor. Of you. Well, yeah, it would have been a statue of me. Yeah, of course, it would have been a statue of me, but it would say in, in, our, in memory. honor of Christian. In memory of Christian at the bottom. He's such a punchline for you. <laughs> I knew it was coming early, early uh, today. It's so good, but it's so good. It's so good every time. I've heard it three or four times it's, today. And it's good every time. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the funny thing. But, no, so I, I guess the biggest thing is we try to, to wrap up this uh, terrible podcast because we don't want to talk about anything at all that's going on in the world. Uh, y'all got to hear the rant on the front end of it. But, uh, in shooting, working those fundamentals, you'll never go wrong working the fundamentals. I mean, that's what we really, that's, that's the takeaway, right? We can get out and do specific applications, do the fastest combat reloads, or we can see who can have the fastest whole straw, even though it might not tie specifically to what we're doing tactically over here with maybe a transition drill or the carbine. All that stuff's fun and everything. However, getting back to the fundamentals, getting back to that rock, to that base, to that foundation, it seems as if every time you do that, you will blow people's minds because once they get that set, you can't shake them. Once they get that foundation set, they can't be shaken. Well, I know like uh, in football, mm -hmm. I mean, the guys that play in the NFL are the best. They're the best at the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's natural ability and talent there, of course, but they're the best at the fundamentals. I mean, it just really – and they get repetition from the fundamentals. Right. I mean, the only difference between – Really, uh, I've said this before, is, is you know some of the guys in the SEAL teams and some of the guys with local PDs or law enforcement or whatever, the difference in them is millions of repetitions, hundreds of thousands of repetitions of the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and most of your law enforcement and, and other, you know, and the like don't don't have that opportunity. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's like all on the job training. You're thrown into it almost immediately, yeah. right? Yeah, because right. we got to get somebody on the street. We got to get somebody in the jail or on patrol or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because yeah, it's like in the uh, like in the teams. You're going through SQT, whether you're going through your green team. You know, I mean, you start out like CQD, two man pistol entries, right? I mean, that's what it starts out in any any training pipeline, at least in NSW. Versus when I went to the police academy, they're like, "Hey, here's a house. Flow through it." <laughs> yeah. This guy's like. I've never even shot a gun before, you know. Much less, much less clear a house, you know. Sure, more like I figured out, we will get some tools for your toolbox. Well, it's just That's like the, the way it works. you're talking about the specific application. If you got the fundamentals and shooting, it applies everywhere. Same That's if right. you know how to, you know how to walk through a door with a gun, present to your corner, and get your scans in. You can, you can take, anything. you can take down any house, any building mm -hmm. there is. That's right. right. That's right. Tell us one story about aliens before we go to bed. It's legit. I mean, they're at, they're there. <laughs> they're there. It's, it's legit. They're there. <laughs> but more, uh, one more funny story. True. We should have you talk about shooting a movie. <laughs> yeah, talking, yeah. So yeah. How, what's your what's your coach? So we use coaching cues when teaching the fundamentals, but there was a weird coaching cue today. Yeah, yeah. So that nobody was sure about. So a good way to shoot while you're moving is uh, pretend your gun is a cup full of milk jug also known as a jug sometimes <laughs> when it's real hot outside <laughs> like right after you milked a cow yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah you milk a cow this, so. get you a nice jug walk around with it if you don't spill it you can be pretty good at shooting and moving <laughs> so the students are like looking at each other right they're like yeah. 
<laughs> What's this guy talking about? Is he having a heat stroke? Yeah. Watching your mother's room or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, man, I have to past your mom's room with a jug of milk. <laughs> Halfway through it, I was like, I was like, man, I wish I could just crawl in a hole right now because yeah. it's just horrible. I think this guy's having a stroke. <laughs> He's having a stroke. <laughs> like, get, a, get an IV in Somebody him. Somebody check his wallet. Like, hey, man, you know, when you're hungry, you're thirsty, you just need a jug of milk. That's all right. That's no, I, you know, that's okay. That's normally me in the diabetic crash, you know. <laughs> No, so I guess the biggest thing on this podcast is fundamentals, guys. <clears throat> no matter how proficient you get in the job you do, no matter how proficient you get um, in the in the hobby you have, if you're you know a hobbyist type shooter, no matter how proficient you are, you can never go away from the fundamentals. That doesn't matter if you're shooting slingshots, bow and arrow, pistol, shotgun, rifle, right? Shotgun stuff's the same thing. All the fundamentals are the same. And if you have a rock solid base of fundamentals, um, you will be able to apply those fundamentals anywhere so all right well i guess that's it guys blow thanks gun. for do what blow gun probably <laughs> 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 sleepy boys mm-hmm. all right guys well hey thanks for listening reach out follow us support the sheriff's office campaign see you next time was that pretty was that at least pretty good for this round all right good i was trying to be quiet over here it was so hard in the back. Are you still filming? Yeah. <laughs> All the good stuff happens after we're done. So yeah. I keep it rolling.